If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Antenna mounting accessories are critical for stable Wi-Fi implementations. The mounting and orientation of the AP or the antenna determines the RF coverage provided. External antennas need to be securely mounted and installation guides should be referenced. Pole mount antennas typically use brackets for mounting. However, custom mounting brackets can be made to allow an antenna to be mounted and fit the need where a standard mount does not. Brackets are typically used to mount antennas on poles, to walls, or on ceilings. You may need to mount antennas or even access points indoors to provide coverage outdoors due to local regulations. To do this, you can use suction cup mounting kits on windows. You should consult the manufacturer's documentation to understand the recommended mounting options and if they are included with the AP or if they are as an optional add-on. Also, when mounting outdoors in addition to coverage requirements and safety requirements and lightning requirements for weather, you also need to comply with local ordinances for aesthetics. Mounting enclosures. Enclosures are used for many purposes and in different environments they are typically made of plastic which is transparent to RF signals. It's not uncommon for the APs you mount to require enclosures for security, weather protection, or even aesthetics. Flush mount ceiling enclosures are typically used in aesthetically concerned venues such as hospitality, retail, and healthcare to conceal the APs from view. In school environments, a gymnasium may require APs to be protected from accidental impact with some type of athletic equipment. You can find custom mounts that will fit different enterprise quality APs. Be sure to account for the access point and any external peripherals which may be required. National Electrical Manufacturers Association, or NEMA enclosures, are typically used in scenarios where environmental protection is required. They protect from weather, harsh environments, and hazardous materials or chemicals. For additional security, these enclosures can be locked if required. They can also be customized to provide heating or cooling to remain within the AP's operating temperature. Say if, for instance, they were mounted in a walk-in freezer or perhaps outdoors in direct sunlight. Lightning protection. In outdoor deployments, Lightning arresters are used to protect access point components from close proximity lightning strikes. They do not protect against direct lightning strikes. Should an antenna be struck directly by lightning, it will be lost and most likely the equipment to which it is attached will be lost as well. Lightning arresters are installed in line between the antenna and the radio connector. Any equipment which is installed between the lightning arrestor and the antenna will not be protected by the lightning arrestor. For this reason, you should install the lightning arrestor closer with nothing between it and the antenna and closely to the antenna. The antenna cable is going to the arrestor and the arrestor itself will need to be replaced after a strike. Also, you must use a good earth ground when deploying outdoors. A lightning arrestor alone is not enough. A low impedance ground wire is used to connect the lightning arrestor to the grounding rod. High voltage transient currents induced from a nearby lightning strike are shunned away from the radio into the earth ground when used. Remember that a lightning arrestor alone will not protect a wireless LAN system from a direct lightning strike. Check the mounting installation manual for your hardware to determine where proper grounding needs are required. RF cables carry electrical currents between the antenna and the wireless transceiver. These cables introduce loss and long RF cable runs may introduce enough loss to prevent RF communication. RF cables are rated for their loss as a number of dB per given length, typically minus 3 dB per 100 feet. RF cables come in many pre-cut links of 20, 50, 75, 100, or 150 foot length. The RF cable 
should be kept as short as possible in order to minimize the loss. LMR400 and LMR600 are typically used in the wireless LAN industry due to reasonably low cost and low loss. LMR400 is typically used for shorter runs and is thinner than LMR600, which is typically used for longer runs and has less loss. There are cable loss calculators online that can tell you which of these cable types are going to have the least amount of loss based on the frequency and power levels for your specific application. RF connectors are used to join different components of an RF system. These also introduce loss. However, higher quality connectors will have minimal loss. You should know that wireless LAN equipment has standardized on 50 ohms impedance. Cables or adapters that introduce an impedance mismatch cause power to be reflected back to the source instead of going out to the antenna. This degrades the amplitude of the signal. Power reflected back due to impedance mismatch can even damage components of the transceiver. This would not normally occur in a typical deployment, but could be observed in situations where there is an impedance mismatch and the transmit power is very high. One of the most common connector types used in Wi-Fi is the subminiature version A or SMA connector. You will see these as SMA male or SMA female. These are typically used for indoor components. An N-type connector is the largest of the common wireless LAN connectors. These are commonly used in outdoor equipment using high transmit power. A smaller version of this connector is the tiny N-type connector or TNC. They are smaller in diameter than an N connector and work with cable that is smaller in diameter as well. Most of these connectors are straight but angle connectors do exist for specific applications.